I'm going to go ahead and call us to order and declare that we have a quorum of five members present. It takes us to item C, receive a presentation related to the accelerated instruction for end of course exams 2018-19. Dr. Ely. Thank you, Mr. Harris, members of the board. Um, Students at the high school level uh, complete end-of-course examinations uh, in English 1, English 2, Algebra 1, Biology, and U.S. History. Uh, students who do not uh, make a passing grade on that, uh, uh, on one of those assessments or, or more, uh, go through a process we call Accelerate Instruction to help get them prepared for a subsequent administration of the end-of-course exam. Uh, TEA mandates that we uh, share the information on how our kids have, uh, students have done on the end-of-course assessments as as well as uh, the, what we have done to uh, accelerate instruction in between uh, those administrations uh, and then how they've done on subsequent administrations. So with a, a report on that this evening and then a public hearing to follow for public comments on this, uh, but in, uh, doing this presentation will be Mrs. Molly Perry, uh, Chief Administrative Officer. Mrs. Perry. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ely, Mr. Harris, members of the board. Uh, as Dr. Ely said, we're going to um, go through our accelerated instruction results this evening. Uh, but first, it's uh, helpful, I think, to uh, calibrate and remember, since we do only look at this once a year as a board, um, what exactly is required. And we know that in the state of Texas, um, that accelerated instruction or uh, instruction after a student has not met the passing standard uh, is required for um, certain grade levels. And specifically, this evening, we're talking about those end of course exams. Um, that can be before or after school. It can happen um, outside of normal school hours or even during school. Um, this evening we'll really specifically focus in on our summer remediation program um, that happens prior to the June administrations. So uh, according to the Texas Education Code, um, and as most recently amended by House Bill 5, um, we have to evaluate the effectiveness and then hold this public hearing to really consider those results. So as a reminder, we did look at this uh, last month, but uh, it's helpful just to, to re-look uh, re at where things landed with our actual performance uh, to set the stage. Um, for Algebra 1, um, we've got our students who took that in the spring. So that's going to be um, our standard of approaches, meaning passes, uh, on the left column with the blue uh, representing the percent uh, of the state versus red in College Station ISD at the three levels of passing standard. So approaches uh, is the passing standard, then the higher standard would be meets, and the highest standard uh, is master. So all of those students who master, of course, also meet and also approach, uh, which explains why those numbers do not add up to 100. And so um, we have uh, algebra. Uh, then we have biology, where you can see similar trends of our students um, surpassing those uh, rates of passing in all three categories uh, across uh, the content area. Then we have both English 1 and 2, uh, which incorporates a writing component and a reading component um, into each of those exams. You'll notice that those passing rates are uh, a bit lower, both at the state uh, and at the local level. And uh, as a reminder, we've talked about this a few times in the past, but those passing standards vary quite a bit. Uh, for example, in order to meet the passing standard in biology, a student has to uh, make at least 38% uh, correct versus uh, English 2 at 60 percent. So there's a, a wide range in terms of where those standards are. Um, so of course as that gets more rigorous, um, the rate of passing tends to, to fall off a bit. But we uh, in College Station ISD uh, still have very, uh, very good rates relative to those state performances across the various passing standards. Uh, and then finally, in U.S. history, um, you can see both at the state and local level, performance is very strong. That's also an area where passing standards are, are significantly lower than English 1 and 2. So um, what does that mean in terms of the students that need remediation? Well, we looked at um, straight percentages, um, but then we have actual numbers of students. So across um, all of our campuses, we had 60 students in Algebra 1 in the spring administrations that did not meet the standard out of almost 1,000 testers. And so those testers represent um, not only the students who are taking it for the first time, but perhaps students that have retaken it uh, in the spring and um, did or did not pass again. Um, so relatively small numbers, especially in Algebra 1 biology in U.S. history, uh, that do require remediation, of course, with greater numbers in English 1 and 2 for the reasons mentioned earlier. 
So in looking at how our students actually performed on those uh, summer reassessments, um, you'll notice on the, the left column after the content area, we've got the um, total number of retests that were given by content in the summer. Um, and then we've got a section on uh, the left in the gray that would indicate those students who took at the test again but didn't go to summer remediation uh, versus those who did because students um, can opt to just go ahead and take that assessment without um, attending the, the offerings that we provide. And um, in the blue, you'll notice the shaded uh, results for the students who did attend versus those who didn't. Um, I will caution you, these are very small numbers, so percentages can certainly be misleading, uh, but overall, our students who did attend definitely performed um, at higher rates of passing than those who did not. Then thinking about um, the idea of growth, uh, we, we know that there are students that attend that may not necessarily uh, meet the passing standard and those that, that do, um, but the, the goal is growth here regardless. And so um, this looks at the increase in raw score or number of questions uh, that a student uh, advanced from their spring versus their summer administration. And so again, uh, we see greater growth for those students who did attend our summer remediation programs. Um, then looking at how things have evolved over the last few years, we've got uh, the passing rates for our students who do attend only uh, in 2017, 18, and 19. Um, you'll notice some variance um, across those years. We see uh, dips in growth. Of course, uh, again, small numbers makes it a little more difficult to compare, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, we are seeing growth uh, for most of our areas, uh, especially in the area of English, which uh, is typically the most challenging for students um, to meet those passing standards. Uh, so overall, uh, we're really especially proud of the performance growth in the area of English, and um, there was a significant adjustment uh, this year. Students, um, instead of attending two full weeks of two-hour sessions, attended um, at least one week of four-hour sessions, which allowed us to go through the entire uh, writing cycle, and so there were less gaps in instruction. Um, in those classes, we also had um, both co-teach, or special education, and bilingual supports um, in small class sizes of generally seven to 10 students. And so um, that was definitely a highlight of success this year. Um, of course, every year uh, participation is a challenge and that's not necessarily because students don't want to take advantage of the accelerated instruction opportunities. But as you know, summer is very busy, especially for high school students who may be working or traveling. And so, so that is an ongoing challenge, although we've continued to work on uh, trying to incentivize kids to, to join us. Um, we also um, do not have great information at the time time of remediation for uh, really digging into the specific skills because those exams are taken relatively late in the spring. Um, we know that they passed or that they didn't, but we don't necessarily know the specific areas uh, of concern based on the student. And, um, and then a challenge has been in the past, especially scheduling for those students who need accelerated instruction in, in more than one content area. Um, so that adjustment in English has actually helped with that as well because students can attend uh, English for a solid week and then a different content area for the other week prior to the assessments. So um, I want to um, definitely uh, provide a uh, big round of applause to Mr. McKeever because um, he has been our uh, accelerated instruction administrator for the last few years. Um, the data that we have uh, shared tonight, he's helped compile and uh, definitely has helped shape this program for both um, of our comprehensive as well as our choice high school students who, who need that um, extra programming in the summer. So I would like to thank him. And with that, um, I would be happy to take any questions or any comments that you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, questions, comments? I would like to echo what Mrs. Perry said about Michael McKeever, assistant principal at a Consolidated High School. He's done a, an excellent job with this program uh, and with our students and has uh, done just a bang-up job of analyzing the data and making uh, improvements to the program. So thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank you to all those involved. I, I guess I would ask is there anything else that we could do as a board to help support your efforts because it's definitely a, a very valuable effort to help these students uh, try to make up that ground and actually graduate uh, I, I don't think so most of this uh, one of the biggest challenges is, is attendance in the summer and we understand that families have uh, have plans and and students have work and, and those types of things I don't I don't know that uh, that's the really the biggest challenge that we face. So appreciate your support uh, of this program and all of our programs. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. That takes us to the receive public comment. Uh, do we have any cards? I do not. Does anyone wish to turn in a card and speak on, on this matter? Okay. With that, we are adjourned. And we will return at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. So four minutes for the regular meeting. Thank you.